Song of Solomon chapter 1. We're really just beginning our journey through the book. Uh, we're going to look at verses 5 and 6 in this class. I had originally intended to look at verses 5 through 8, but it just proved to be too much material uh, for one sitting. I didn't want to have to rush through it. Song of Solomon 1, verses 5 and 6. The young lady in the book is speaking to her husband-to-be, to her in the best of senses, to her lover, to the king. He is called the king. I believe it is Solomon, King Solomon himself. There are theories, class, there are approaches to the book uh, that include a, a tryst, a, a, a group of three love characters involved. That would be King Solomon, the Shulamite, the young lady, and then a shepherd lover. A separate figure, a shepherd lover. I will not teach the book uh, from that hermeneutic, from that point of view. I'm going into the Song of Solomon prejudiced, biased, call it what you will. I'm looking for the church and the Lord Jesus Christ. Those two pictures, those two emblems. And this young lady, the Shulamite, who loves him so much that we saw in our last lesson, kiss me, draw me. And then he responded by taking her into the innermost recesses of his house, into his very chambers. That's the way we're going to look at it. Christ, that young lady, and the church. Christ and the church. I misspoke. The church, that young lady, and the Lord Jesus Christ, Solomon himself. And there are ways that Solomon is a type of the Lord Jesus. Oh, I just reviewed, didn't I? She is so in love with him. Kiss me. I want to spend time with you. Draw me. See, that's the attitude we as a church should have toward our Savior. Wanting to be with him. To commune to fellowship, sweet time together. But once he carried her into his chambers, I think I pictured that as our being able to go before the throne of grace, our, our being called into the holy of holies, the very presence of God. Once she's been there, she makes a remarkable statement. Verse 5, Song of Solomon Chapter 1, verse 5, listen to her. I am black. I am black. Now, many of the commentaries want to take that to mean that she uh, is of a, a by birth, black-skinned, a black individual. I don't believe that. I believe she's Jewish. I, I, I believe that she, well, what does it mean, preacher? I am black. We're going to learn in just a few minutes in our two-verse span in tonight's lesson. Uh, we're going to learn that by black, she means sunburnt, spotted by the sun. And we're going to learn why she has that opinion of herself. But wait a minute, class. I want to teach it. I want to preach it in this sense. She's been around Jesus. She's been around the Lord. And the first thing she realizes is how inadequate, how lowly, how spotted, how stained, how black she really is. Wow. The word that is used there for, for black, shakor, shakor, it has the same point, the same consonants, spelled the same as far as the consonants are concerned as the word morning, like sunrise, morning. 
And what she's saying, oh, I've been around my Savior. I see how far short I'm falling. I see how I do not measure up. I am, I am black within my heart. I, I, I'm not what I even thought I would be in His presence. But black in the sense of black and getting brighter, the morning, the sunrise. Black, dark, inadequate, but I'm going to grow. I'm going to progress. I, I, I'm going to get more and more into the light of the Word of God and of the Spirit of God. I am black. Can I talk about that just for a few minutes after she's been in His presence? Psalm 51, verse 5. David said, I was shapen in iniquity. I was born in iniquity. In sin did my mother conceive me. This young lady, she's beginning to realize that only by the grace of God, only through the blood of Jesus can she be washed white. Listen to Jeremiah 17, 9. Our heart is deceitful above all things. And it is desperately wicked. That's her saying, I am black. I am stained in the presence of my Savior. I am so tarnished. Listen to Genesis 8, 21. The imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. I am black. I am darkened by... by and by the way, even if you're saved... You still have that old sin nature. We still have that darkness clinging to us. Listen to Paul. Paul's been saved for years when he writes this. I know, Paul the Apostle, that in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. That's Paul's way of saying I'm blackened. I, I'm blighted. Uh, Isaiah as soon as Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up in Isaiah 6, woe is me. I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips. I dwell among a people of unclean lips because I've seen the Lord of hope. You get around Jesus, you'll say I'm black. I'm not what I ought to be. And, uh, and you say, uh, uh, um, on and on and on we can go on the idea of her blackness. Let's get back to verse number five. I am black, now listen, but comely. I am black, but comely. Let me give you that word comely. N-A-V-E-H, nave. Nave, this is what it means. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now, wait a minute, preacher Bagwell. Uh, that's going to be a contradiction there. I am black, darkened, sun spotted, sun stained, and, and, uh, and then yet I am beautiful. Oh boy. It's going to be a delight to try to teach this to you. Every Christian. Every believer in Christ, watch my fingers, has two natures. We have that old sin nature, and the Lord has washed away the sins. But those desires, those propensities, those inclinations are still there. We have that old sin nature. And then when we get saved, hallelujah, the Holy Spirit moves in and we are given a new nature. That's why many of the old-timey Bible preachers and teachers said every Christian uh, consists of two natures, an old nature and a new. That's exactly the spiritual truth of what this girl is saying. I am black but comely. I have blemishes, but I also am absolutely beautiful. This is a picture of a wholesome Christian life. I said a wholesome Christian life. Listen, I look to myself. Oh, how weak. Oh, how inadequate. Oh, how darkened. Oh, how black. Oh, how 
Oh, how weak. But in His eyes, in His eyes, now that I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, now that the Lord Jesus has saved me, I am lovely. Do you see it? I am beautiful. Our word here, I am comely. Listen to Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 14. It's another young girl that God found in the wilderness. It's a picture of Israel. And, uh, oh Lord, oh Lord, uh, 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 the heathen, the nations of the world know of thee and of, uh, of uh, uh, thy glory and thy honor. And, uh, and Lord, I was ugly. I was black. I was, I was filled to the world. But... It was perfect. I was made perfect, Ezekiel 16, 14, through my comeliness, God's talking to her, which I put upon thee. God said to that little old girl, she was found in the wilderness, rejected by her parents, drowning in her own blood. She was in a mess. The Lord found her and loved her cut her navel, her navel hadn't even been cut, and cleaned her up and, and, and aided her to maturity and, and dressed her in beauty. He said, I put my beauty upon you. Did you realize when you got saved, God made you beautiful in His eyes? He dressed you in the Holy Ghost of God. I am black, but comely. Black, but let me tell you something about Brother Bible. I'm accepted. I am accepted in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm born again. I'm a saint of God. I'm on my way to heaven. It's Ephesians 1, 6. To the praise of the glory of His grace, He hath made us accepted in the Beloved. And the Beloved is Jesus. I have been made accepted in the Beloved. Comely. Paul wrote in Colossians 1, 18, he said, I want to present every man perfect in Christ. I want to present every man perfect lovely, complete, mature, comely in the Lord Jesus. Colossians 2.10 says we are complete in Him. We are complete in our Savior. We are comely in the eyes of an almighty God. Black, and the closer I get to God and the more I grow, the blacker in the sense of blemishes, in the sense of uh, the shortcomings in my life, the more I realize I am but comely, the more I realize how He's made me acceptable, how He's blessed me, how He's cleansed me for His honor and glory. You say, preacher, I want to become less black and more comely. Listen, listen, 2 Corinthians 3.18. We all, with an open face, Beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, we will be changed from black to comely. We will be changed into the same image from glory to glory by the Spirit of the Lord. The more I hang around Jesus, the more I meditate, the more I fellowship with Him, the more I'll be changed from blackness, sun-spottedness, to comeliness, to Loveliness. First John 3, 2. Brethren, we are now the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. <laughs> I, 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 I'm a son of God, but I'm still in this old flesh. I'm black, but it doesn't appear what I'm going to be. I, I know when He comes again, I shall be like Him. The tabernacle of old in Moses' day, if you saw it set up out in the desert of it was covered on the outside with drab, dull, colorless badger skin. That's what it was. But oh, if you ever got inside. Oh, if you ever could gain that. How comely, how beautiful, how lovely was that. Listen to this. It's the last verse in Philippians 3. I think it's verse 21. Paul said, Jesus is coming. He'll change my vile body, my stained body, my, my sin weakened body, and it'll be fashioned like unto His glorious body, His comely body. Wow. What a beautiful series of thoughts. I am black but comely. Now she continues speaking in verse number 5. I'm black as the tents of Kedar. 
I'm black as the tents of Kedar. So preacher, what in the world does that mean? Kedar. Historically, it is the name of one of the sons of Ishmael. I'll give you the reference to, to prove that. Genesis 25, 13, one of the sons of Ishmael. So, Arab in nature, a nomad, a wanderer, and their tents, what I've read, what I've studied, their tents were, were, were made out of black goat's hair. Their tents were, were, were exceedingly, extremely black. And uh, I am black. I am stained. She's amplifying how lowly she considers herself, how humility has gripped her soul. Listen to Psalm 120, verse 5, the first of the Psalms of degrees. Woe is me. Woe is me. I sojourn in Meshach. I dwell in the tents of Kedar. Woe is me. I live in the tents of blackness, the tents of Kedar. An emphasis on our ineptitude spiritually and how we need the comeliness and the loveliness of Jesus. But woe is me, I'm outside the Holy Land, Meshach. Woe is me, I'm living in the black tents of, 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 of no man. But we are pilgrims and we are strangers on this earth. Mm, mm. One more thing. I am black, but comely, like the tents of Kedar, comma, as the curtains of Solomon. As the curtains of Solomon. Oh boy, this takes us into Solomon's house. This takes us into Solomon's palace. That would be the word. This takes us into Solomon's home where the, and the curtains likely were gold laced. The curtains likely were beautiful and wide and ornamented and, and gorgeous. I'm black, two natures, but in his eyes I'm beautiful. Nothing to me, everything to him. I, I, I'm black like the tents of Kedar. I, I, I'm, I'm like a, a stranger from the commonwealth of the things of God. But then again, I'm like the curtains of Solomon. I'm like the curtains of Solomon inside, in God's eyes, in the temple language. I'm beautiful, clear, spotless, without wrinkle, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. But now class, there is one more thing we must see here. I am black, but comely. Black as the tents of Kedar, as beautiful as the curtains of Solomon in his palace. Then she addresses this remark, O ye daughters of Jerusalem. O ye daughters of Jerusalem. This is the first time that we have had this group of ladies O ye daughters of Jerusalem introduced in the book, and they will recur throughout the book. Uh, who are these daughters of Jerusalem? Let me make some observations, if I can, please. First of all, I'd like to remark that they are not anti-Solomon, anti-Christian, anti-marriage relationship between the little country Shulamite girl and the king uh, uh, and King Solomon. They are in favor of that. I'll tell you who they are. They, number one, uh, literarily, they're a sounding board. They're a sounding board for the Shulamite. Oh my, I'm black. And yet, uh, daughters of Jerusalem, in my lover's eyes, I know I'm beautiful. Uh, he's told me again and again, I'm comely. Uh, I'm complete in him. I've been made perfect in him. They're a sounding board for the Shulamite. And you may say, preacher, you keep calling her the Shulamite. Where do you get that? Let me go ahead and tell you. Put it in your notes. Song of Solomon 6, verse 13. Chapter 6, verse 13. Daughters of Jerusalem, Daughters of Jerusalem, that implies birth. They have been begotten. I, this is what I think they are uh, spiritually. They are friends of the bride. They are friends of the bridegroom. Now here's, here's the heart of it. 
And they are getting more and more interested about the bridegroom. They don't know the bridegroom as well as she, the little bride-to-be, the little Shulamite know, but they're getting interested. They're warming up. And if you trace the trajectory of the daughters of Jerusalem all the way through the book, of the, they, they love him more. And the more they learn about him, they, they, they fall even more uh, in, 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 in love with him. And, and, uh, but daughters of Jerusalem, they're residents of the city. The Shulamite, she's a resident of the country. It, it might interest you to know that in Luke 23, verse, 30, verse 28, 23, 28, Jesus on his way to the cross, he's been arrested. He's being led uh, to be crucified. He turned and he looked on a group of ladies and he said, daughters of Jerusalem, Jesus used the term, weep not for me, weep for yourselves and for your children, for what the Jews are doing to me today, killing me, putting me on the old rugged cross. Don't weep for me, weep for yourselves. And, and, and watch this, and it's beautiful. All the way through the book, the bride, Shulamite, she talks to the daughters of Jerusalem about him. They converse about him. They fellowship about him. She's telling them more and more about him. And it reminds me of a verse in Malachi 3.16. I haven't preached on this in a long time. Then they that feared the Lord spake one to another. The Shulamite to the daughters of Jerusalem. They spake one to another and the Lord in heaven hearkened. He heard it and a book of remembrance was written. It was written before the Lord and it was written on behalf of those that feared the Lord and that thought upon His name. God's writing down the words. When you're fellowshipping at church with a brother or sister in Christ, you're bragging on Jesus, magnifying His marvelous grace, thanking God for Cal God's Calvary. God's writing it down in His book. The daughters of... Jer they want to know more. They want to know more about the King. Who was it? Socrates, I think. Philosopher. He said, know thyself. This is his full sentence. To know thyself is the very beginning of wisdom. I'm going to tell you something. I hope I get an amen. You can't know yourself apart from the Word of God. You can't know yourself apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't know yourself, I am black, until you have met Him and realize how much He loves you and how He shed His blood to die for you on the cross of Calvary. Mm. They're city girls, daughters of Jerusalem. Their skin is fair, unblemished by the sun, not black and darkened by the sun. I can prove to you that those who tended the farm, those who took care of the grapes, oh, I got to get to the next verse. We got to learn. She takes care uh, uh, of the family farm. The captain of the guard, the Jews have been taken into Babylonian captivity. He left the poor of the land to be vine dressers and husbandmen. Husbandmen. Wow. The poor of the land. Let's get to verse 6 or I'm going to run out of time. Look not upon me. Don't look on me. Daughters of Jerusalem, don't look on me. Don't, don't look at me. Let me tell you what she said. Don't look at me. Look at Him. Don't look at me. Look at the Savior. Don't look at me. All you're going to see is a bunch of weakness. Look at the one who's the King of Kings. And the Lord. boy, there's a tremendous spiritual lesson there. Look not upon me because I'm black. Now here's the explanation. Verse 6, the sun hath looked upon me. The sun has tanned me. More than that, the sun has burned me. My mother's children, oh, she's got brothers. My mother, that's who should be taking care of the vineyards. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards. They forced me to keep the vineyards. But my own vineyard have I not kept. My own vineyard have I not 
kept. Oh, I've got to, I've got to go into this very quickly. This little Shulamite girl, she's so sunburned because her mother's children. We know later in chapter 8, we'll learn she's got one sister anyway, a smaller sister, younger sister. But then she has brothers. We're going to learn that. And these brothers, they're lazy. They wouldn't work. They put her out there working. Uh, this is a case. If they're Jews and we believe intently, they are Jews. Some of the Jews fighting other Jews. Some of them, uh, uh, all the way through the Old Testament, God says that we're to love our brother. We're to, we're to, oh my, her mother's children. Her mother's children. Uh, Matthew 10, 36. Let me read it to you quickly. A man's foes shall be those of his own household. Mm. A man's foes shall be the, her own brothers have turned against her. Micah 7, 46. A son, there'll come a day, the son will dishonor the father. A daughter will raise up against her mother. A daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be those of his own house. This little old girl's got so much against her. Her own family's turned and are angry at her, and they're making, and that's why she's so splotched and burned with the son. Job's friends. They were supposed to be his friends, and they turned against him. They turned. Jesus said, "I'm warning you." You better take heed. Don't mistreat the little ones. Don't despise the little ones. Be careful how you treat the young brothers and sisters in Christ. Whole book of Obadiah, one chapter. God's judgment upon the Edomites because they hurt. They attacked their brethren, the Jews, uh, the Edomites, descendants of Esau, related to the Jews. And God said, I will bring you down. I will punish you. Wow. I'm black. Don't look at me. Let's train our eyes on Jesus the Savior. My mother's children, they've been mad at me. They've been angry at me. They put me out in the field working. And, and, uh, and, and this girl's not afraid of work. This girl's industrious. Uh, this girl's got a lot of initiative. Church, this girl's a picture of the church. When it comes to our Savior, when it comes to our character, we're not supposed to be lazy. We're supposed to be industrious. We're supposed to uh, take the, and even that can be preached. They made me keeper of the vineyards, but my own vineyard have I not kept. They made me keeper of the vineyards, but my own vineyard have I not kept. The closer she gets to Jesus in his chambers, the more she realizes my own vineyard I have not kept. Simon Peter one day in the presence of Jesus, Jesus worked a miracle there in Luke 5, the fishes, the miracle of the great catch of fish. And when Peter saw it, he fell on his knees. He said, depart from me, Jesus. I am a sinful man. That's what this little old girl's doing. She's been around Jesus. She's been abused and administered. She's been around Jesus. She thought, I am black. I am undone. Oh, I am a sinful girl. Wow. Wow. What an interesting, interesting thing. This little old girl is parallel to that little girl in Ezekiel 16, found drowning in her own blood, found her hated by her mother, disowned, and then the Lord comes and picks her up, loves her, nourishes her, grows her up, and beautifies her, and ends up, it's going to be a picture of God the Father marrying the nation of Israel, a forerunner of Jesus marrying His church. He they made her keeper of the vineyards, but they didn't pay her anything. They didn't, they didn't give her anything. Somebody said there's a relationship here between this Shulamite girl and the prodigal son. Rejected, uh, 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 hungry, uh, not, not being fed. Uh, 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 and, then, uh, and then the lover found her. The king found her. With the prodigal, his daddy found him. And, and oh my, how it were a girl who realizes how weak, how inept, how blackened by sin she is. But she met the king, fell in love with the king, and now in his eyes, she's lovely. She's beautiful. Class, don't let the devil tell you you're ugly. Don't let him tell you you're nothing. In God's eyes, you're lovely. 
lovely.